There's almost no traffic at the Gatuna Gatuna border post. For close to a year now, Rwanda has advised its citizens against crossing it. Activity here has slowed to a trickle. Before the crisis, it was bustling with Rwandans entering Uganda to buy goods or work. Jean-Marie was a school teacher on the other side of the border. When the crossing closed, he lost his job and was forced to return to his family's small farm. The situation is very complicated now that we can no longer buy goods in Uganda. Before it was two euros, I could buy 10 kilos of flour and feed my family. But today, if I buy the same amount in Rwanda, it's five times more expensive. Traders at the border are also taking a hit. This man agreed to speak to us on the condition of anonymity. He says both countries are suffering. We are not living the same life we used to live when the border was still open. It, it changed totally, financially, everything changed. People closed the shops and shifted to other borders. All, all buildings are empty because there is no activity that is taking place. The economic consequences can be felt all the way to Kigali. Production at this chicken farm is at a standstill. Brought some uh, uh, instabilities in feeding our chickens because we were buying here ingredients from Uganda and then they close, then we have to go elsewhere to find the quality is different and then the prices are different. After months of downsizing and redundancy programs, Francis began importing eggs from Tanzania. But he says Rwanda is adapting to the situation, producing more and more raw materials of its own. But then the Rwandans have started doing it themselves here in Rwanda. So it's coming to a good uh, position. Now we're planning to have back our activities. Francis is from Uganda, but he hasn't visited his family in Kampala in two years due to security concerns. In Rwanda, they have no problem. But for us to go there, it's a big problem. Like some of people that go there, they get kidnapped by the Ugandan people and they torture them, they beat them to death. And yeah, they have so many problems, so I don't want to risk my life to go there. Rwanda says those security fears are what prompted the closing of the border. Around 100 Rwandans are reported to be detained in Uganda for espionage. Nine were freed in January. And on February 19th, 15 more individuals were transferred to Rwandan authorities. Narcisse was one of them. During my detention in Uganda, I would sleep on the floor, shackled and almost naked. It was so cold at night we were shivering. The morning they would give us some slop to keep us alive. The torture was unbearable and many times I wished I was dead. Kampala says it's freed these prisoners out of goodwill in the run-up to the four-way summit in Gatuna. It wants Kigali to do the same. I urge Rwanda to demonstrate the same spirit and raise the concerns regarding the over 50 Ugandan detainees in Rwanda. The list of Ugandans known to be in detention have been provided to Rwanda government. Rwanda, meanwhile, says it released 20 Ugandan prisoners, but it has other demands, namely concerning the RNC, a dissident group that Kigali calls a terrorist organization. First, to disband the Rwanda National Congress, RNC, and the Ruth Urunana networks in Uganda, and to arrest and extradite all its members so that they can face justice in Rwanda. Tensions remain high despite recent shows of goodwill. Residents on both sides of the border eagerly await the mediation efforts by Congo and Angola. Their livelihoods and safety depend on it.